still continuing our series on the book of Exodus. There's a, there are important festivals that we need to concentrate on when we get into this. We have talked about the Passover festival. We took seven days. Today we're going to talk about another festival called the Festival of Unliving Bread, which was also celebrated after the Passover, and it also took seven days. Seven days established during the Exodus period when the Israelites were instructed to eat non yeasted bread or unliving bread or bread without yeast to make it big. These days of unliving bread marked a turning point in the way the spring festival, which is the festival of unliving bread, was to be celebrated, celebrated down through the ages by the Israelites. Yes, Christians, on the other hand, will still recall the Exodus, the coming out of Egypt as a type of redemption from sin and release from the bondage of Satan. There would still be an emphasis on eating on living bread as a physical reminder that we are to refrain or resist from other things for us to remain the redemptive people of God. To become spiritually unleavened by removing sin from our lives. Now we want to turn our attention to Exodus chapter 12, verse 17 to 20, as we, ref we reflect on uh, this festival because we are also human beings of celebration and festivals. Exodus chapter 12, verse 17 to 20. Celebrate this festival of unliving bread, for it will remind you that I brought your f forces out of the land of Egypt on this very day. This festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 21st day of that month. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your homes. Anyone who eats anything made with yeast during this week will be cut off from the community of Israel. These regulations apply both to the foreigners living among you and to the na native born Israelites. During those days, you must not eat anything made with yeast. Wherever you live, eat only bread made without yeast. So we want to continue to look at few things that we can see there as we celebrate this festival and when you are observing a festival that is re related to christianity remember these things that we're going to talk about are very important in terms of festival one this festival of a living bird is a reminder in exodus 12 17 it says celebrate this festival of one living bread for it will remind you that I brought your forces out of the land of Egypt this very day. The Israelites, like most human beings, tend to have short memories. They easily forget. When God took them from uh, Egypt and, and brought them to uh, the wilderness, immediately they came there, they forgot that it, was, it is God who has brought them to where they are. They, they just forgot that it was the mercies of God that has been with them. They easily forgot and they started saying, ah, we would have wanted to be in Egypt. 
to eat what we're eating. They always have short memories. They forgot the experience of going through the Red Sea. So they are short memories. So God wanted this festival to be a reminder. So they were to observe the festival as a reminder so they would not easily forget but celebrate their redemption as they, re they replay it year after year. So festivals of God are supposed to be reminders. They are to retain retention. You don't only observe it, but there's something that should remain in you and should be there all the time. It should be something that should be permanently caused. It should be retained. You shouldn't celebrate the festival once and not just celebrate it again. Exodus chapter 12 verse 17b says, This festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. A permanent law. This festival will be a permanent celebration. You celebrate this every time. Retention and institutionalization uh, is important. This is to be their heritage and should be passed on from generation to generation. It's part of their foundation. It's part of their self-understanding. It's part of their survival. And it's a part of their continued existence. Do you have a heritage of separation unto God that you have actually retained and you just uh, so you have to have something like that or you just floating with no permanent markers in your life of the celebration of the freedom and the liberty that God has given you you always have to celebrate that's why we have the lost committee uh, the last of all the Holy Communion we celebrate it always remember that Jesus through his blood has saved us may you have a permanent marker in your life in terms of your relationship to God till eternity. We also have to refrain. Refraining is important. Exodus chapter 12 verse 18 B says, The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 20th, 21st day of that month. The bread you eat must be made without yeast. You have to refrain from putting yeast in that bread. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your homes. Exodus chapter 12, verse 19. Refraining from sin, unacceptable attitudes, is very important. You don't refrain once. You have to continually refrain. Refrain. You move away from intentional and staying away from the dis from, from, from staying away from things that show indiscipline, things that show negative vibrations, you need to move away. Discipline is very crucial in our lives. So to refrain has to do with discipline. We are to move away from insincerity and untruth, pride and arrogance, and the spread of toxic information or gossips, which are the same as the yeast of the Pharisees, which Jesus says we must refrain from. Refrain from the yeast in your life, which makes you a bad influence, a toxic person. Regulation. We need godly regulations in our lives. Exodus 12, 19 says, these regulations apply both to the foreigners living among you and to the native born Israelites. We need some guidelines we need some boundaries in our lives if you are a person without regulations sometimes some christians talk about as a spirit leads, but the spirit leads within the regulations of god the spirit leads does not mean that you can do anything at any time there are the regulations and the boundaries of god and so you remain within the boundaries of god even when you are filled with the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God will not lead you into doing things which are not the re regulatory of God. May you know the regulations of God in your life. And may you live a principled life. So when people meet you, they know that you are with, living within the regulated ways of life, which avoids living. And you live a life of unliving, which is separated unto God. The Israelites were 
to see the festival as regulations of God. In conclusion, part of God's instruction for the days of unleavened bread is to put living bread products out of our homes. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 5 a says, encouraged mostly Gentile church there. And this is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5 8. Keep the yeast not with old living, nor with the living of malice and wickedness, lingering sinful attitudes, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This is a clear reference to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which we are to observe in its meaningful dimensions in our Christian character and lifestyle. God bless you. Hope you are blessed with this message. To get in touch with other messages of the servants of God, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Facebook.